Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. Welcome to the Clutter Fairy Weekly for December 17th, 2019. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. We're so glad you could join us for the pilot episode of the new format we're kicking off today, which will continue in the new year. Starting on January 7th, uh, 2020, we'll meet live on Tuesdays, and that's every Tuesday, oh my God, at noon <laughs> central time for 30 minutes. We're going to shift to a weekly format, which is so amazing. Uh, we'll offer organizing tools and techniques, success stories and aha moments, seasonal suggestions and timeless tips. But our main focus will be on the tons of questions and topic suggestions we get from you, our viewers and listeners. Uh, we get comments all the time. And so we wanted to try to give some time to cover that and get your questions answered. Exactly. Before we get started with today's topics, I want to share a few notes with our viewers. If you're participating in the Zoom meeting, feel free to share your comments and questions via the chat and I'll try to make sure Gail addresses them before we get away to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature to let me know that you'd like to ask a question or make a comment yourself via audio or video. We've had a few people try that, not too many, but uh, we hope more brave souls will be <laughs> willing to jump in and talk to get us live. Get on the video with me. Please get on the video with me. <laughs> We're also streaming the meeting live on Facebook. You can share your questions and suggestions there in the comments and I'll relay them to Gail. If you're watching live, you can also call into the meeting using the number at the top right of your screen. Okay, Gail, let's get right to our first topic. Okay. Hanukkah starts in five days and Christmas Eve is just a week away. Ah. We're hearing from people, <laughs> we're hearing from people as we often do at this time of year who say, I don't know what to get for my sister who buys everything she needs for herself. Or my for, for my friend who's already up to her ears and more stuff than she can manage. What advice can you offer for clutter conscious gift giving? Yeah, it's been a couple of years since we've covered this topic, so we might want to try to make life easier for people who are struggling to finish holiday shopping for the last few difficult people on your list. And I also want to say, if you have people in your life who you think are already overloaded or you believe they are chronically disorganized or you think that they have been or could be diagnosed with a hoarding syndrome and you don't want to add to their problem, I think being very conscious about giving gifts to people who are already overloaded is uh, a good, it's a good thing that you can do for them without being uh, really overt about telling them, them that they're overloaded basically. So um, I want to talk about um, some gifts that will make that easier for them and not leave them with uh, you feeling like you're adding more clutter to their life. So um, what do you buy for the people who have everything already? And you know, when you think about it, now that we have Amazon Prime and everybody can just order, 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 and oh, I have a thought in my head, I want that, and you order it and it shows up the next day, like nobody ever goes without anymore. It's quite shocking and it's very hard to get a gift for somebody who can instantaneously meet all of their immediate thought for anything that they ever want ever. <laughs> so then you need to shift, to, excuse me, you need to shift to things that are not always presents but are experiences. So mix experiences like Here's some movie tickets. Here's a massage or a spa visit. Here is a play. You're going to go to some play together or a recital or any kind of music event. Maybe you guys like concerts and so you can go to a concert together. And one of the things that is important when you give an experience gift like that is if you think that the person is reluctant to go and do that kind of stuff by themselves, then part of what you do is you buy two tickets and then you go with them. You offer to go with them. So, hey, I got us massage ticket, massage uh, gift certificates, and we're going to go together. Or, hey, I bought gift certificates for the get pedicures and we're going to go sit together and do that. So you're giving them a gift of your time and attention as well as paying for the event and so then it becomes an outing and they have company 
and a lot of times people are reluctant to do experiences when you're basically giving them experience that they're then going to go do alone. So if you find that your friend is one of those people, then, um, you know, offer to go with them, buy two tickets and say, I'm planning, I'm basically planning and paying for this fun that we're going to go have together. And that is the perfect thing to give somebody who is chronically disorganized they are they don't keep up with their calendar well they already have too much stuff in the house and if you are offering them tickets and a plan and they don't have to do anything you are really giving them a gift so that's an important thing um i also like to give consumable gifts and um the perfect example that i have is my dad who he likes to smoke cigars much to my stepmother's chagrin but he loves his cigars and he has one on the cigar porch every night. And so this is a kind of consumable gift that's super easy for us to buy him because he he's definitely going to smoke them. I know he's smoking them. And, it, you know, after it's smoked, he's done. And so I can buy a box of cigars and he can be trying something that he hasn't tried before. And he's perfectly happy to have somebody else feed his cigar habit. So that's one of the consumables that I give him. Um, lots of people buy food and you can order meat. It doesn't always have to be sweet for people that if you don't want to be adding a whole bunch of things to your messing up your diet, you know, then you, instead of buying, oh, here's a bunch of cookies or chocolates, maybe you can buy fruit and give them fruit, something like that. And so there are ways for you to provide consumable gifts that aren't necessarily bad for them, I guess. Clearly, the cigars are bad for my dad, but, you know, he's over the age of consent, and he gets to do what he wants. So uh, you can also give a gift to a cause uh, if you are one of those people that – and this is also something that you can create as an event. So if you want to – support a cause, if you want to work for a charity, if you want to go to an event that somebody's like, um, in Houston, there's a, there's a nonprofit called Medical Bridges, and they collect um, medical supplies and send them off to countries that don't have the supplies, and it's our cast-offs, excess, whatever, and they take that stuff and ship it away to places, and so uh, we went as a group, the organizer um, Napo Houston chapter ladies went and volunteered as a group there and we had a whole bunch of fun there was a whole bunch of us and we you know chatted and worked and did our thing but we were also being supportive of this charity by helping them sort which is of course our you know sweet spot right we were helping them sort um, supplies to ship away and so um, you can one of the experiences you can provide is here I'm going to give money to your favorite charity, or here I've arranged for us to go volunteer at the, you know, the SPCA, or let's go work with dogs, or let's go support the zoo, or, I mean, you can create an experience around a charity or a cause that you guys have in common, um, plan an event, create a time that you will go together, or at the very least, you can donate to this you know, we're going to go do the Planned Parenthood march, or we're going to go march for women's rights. <laughs> we, you can create an event, or you can go and donate to whatever charity works for you. And so this is, clearly, this is the gift that is not intended for little kids, right? Like, little kids want to open packages, but, you know, as mature adults, and because we can fund our own Amazon Prime account, <laughs> <laughs> the the necessity of having solid objects to open in a package with a bow is not as necessary as you get older. And so donating in somebody's name or creating an event for somebody to go do is so much more valuable. And spending that time, giving the gift of yourself and your time and attention is so really important to someone who has a busy life and their life is insane and crazy and they have so much going on and if they can stop long enough to make a coffee date with you or a lunch date or you go and take your tickets or your gift certificates and go redeem them um, it will be so memorable to them and it will be and then they go home with painted 
toenails and no object to leave in the house. And so it's a really great, it's a great way to share your time and attention. And um, if little kids, you can work on little kids, but after a certain point, you might start asking them, do you really want stuff or do you want to go somewhere or do something? And you might find that a teenager would be more excited about, hey, let's go on, let's go on this family trip or, hey, take me to this conference or, hey, take me to this movie or that you may find that somebody wants less stuff and more fun. Just a thought, <laughs> just a <my> thought. <laughs> in the chaos of commercial messages we see in here at this time of year, it's easy to lose sight of what's really important. It's not the money that we spend, not the pretty packages or the stuff, but the thought we put into our choices and the time we set aside to spend with our loved ones. And they will remember sitting around at, at the nail salon with the pedicure a whole lot longer than they'll probably remember the gift you gave last year. Just my thought. Gail, um, I wanted to take a second here to remind people to give us their, give us your questions. We have um, lots of stuff prepared. We'll probably run out of time, but we want to squeeze in questions if we get them. And um, I also wanted to welcome back Denise joining us from France. Hi, Denise. How you doing? How you doing? I hope everything's good in France. And also um, Paige in Oklahoma City and Patricia from SoCal. Hi, are, ladies. How are y'all? Facebook. Thanks for joining. The SoCal, y'all, you're up early, I guess, right? It's, is it two well, hours it's or three hours? Ten. It's 10. It's there? 10, okay, yeah. Okay. Not too early. A little early. <laughs> right. I just think of that as being really far away and much earlier. Okay, well, let's, doing... let's go on. Um, I want to take a moment to let anyone know who might be watching us live for the first time that we have a collection of more than 100 videos on a wide variety of organizing organizing topics on our YouTube channel. Ooh. Cue the sign. Cue the sign. <laughs> There's the sign. That At is our address. CFHOU.com slash YouTube. You can subscribe on YouTube to get notifications whenever we post something new. Um, even when we're not meeting weekly, we're going to try and have new content weekly. So subscribe and you'll always know what the latest thing is. Also, feel free to share your comments and questions in the YouTube comments. We read them all, and we try to respond to every single one. I think we've done pretty Eventually. well with that. Yeah, sooner or later. Sooner or later. Eventually, I answer them all. <laughs> That's okay, so our, our next topic. Gail, we've had a few questions about the virtual organizing service that we announced recently. Okay. Can you tell us a little more about how that works and the sure. experiences you've had working with clients virtually? It has been so much fun. I have to say, I was a little concerned when I started offering the service that the fact that I wasn't actually in the home um, working with somebody would be um, not as much fun for me. But the truth is, as you're walking around with your phone and showing me the space and I'm seeing it, it's like I'm walking in the house now and I get really invested in the results. It's quite amazing. So I have a client who um, is from Idaho. And she is um, working on her garage and it's a really big garage, it's like a three car garage. And she's trying to get ready for a reunion that's happening in the spring. And so um, she showed it to me originally the first time. And then we decided that we really needed to divide it up into four quadrants because it was so big. And so then we started talking about each quadrant and the work that needed to be done in each quadrant. And so she has done that. Um, the first quadrant and checked back in with me and we walked through and looked at what she did and then we started talking about the next quadrant and it was so much fun for me and I'm like oh my god you got to call me back and tell me what's happening with this garage I'm so invested in this garage and it's been so much fun so the process is um, really easy the zoom app is just a little app you download on whatever device you're going to use that allows us to have this meeting um, together. And so then I, uh, once you uh, schedule a virtual meeting, then we set up an appointment and you get a link. And then when it's time for the meeting, you click on the link and then you're there on the video and I'm there just like I am right now. And then you can take around and show me your stuff and it'll be like I'm walking through the house. And basically I'm giving the home organizer who feels like they can do it themselves with 
guidance, um, the ability to check in, make a list, set some priorities. Uh, I can give great ideas about what you can do and how you can put things away. And then you go and do some of it and then call me back again another day and make another appointment and check in and let me see what you've done. And it's been so much fun. It really has been. And I've been surprised. Like I said, I was really worried that it would not be as much fun experience for me because I wasn't there, but I guess the cameras are so good. It's almost like being there. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. And you know, once I'm in the house, I really wanted to be okay for you. And so, yes, that person is me. <laughs> I see that on the bottom. I can't read the whole thing. Ed. What does it say? <laughs> it was so much fun. She says that person is me. She did fantastic. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I appreciate it. It really was a great time. And then like, I am all invested in that garage now. I can't wait to get it all done and for you to have a big party and have all your family come and be having food and uh, family reunion in that garage. I'm super excited about that. So if you're interested, uh, please feel free. And I'm going to, where's my little sign? Here's my sign. Okay, here's the virtual sign. That will take you to the place to sign up for the virtual stuff. And uh, it will be super easy, I promise. And I know it's a little intimidating the first time you do it, but um, you only have to download the app once wherever you're gonna use the phone or the cell phone, I mean, the cell phone or the laptop or whatever, whatever camera device you're gonna do. And then um, after that, it's just clicking the link and and you're in and you're ready to go. So Gail, hold up that sign again, if you would. Oh, yes, sir. Here is my sign. Just so it's there a little longer. And so I can Here say cfhou.com slash virtual. There we go. So that when we do the audio version of this, <clears throat> oh, it's in listeners there. will know what we were talking about. What in the world <laughs> we were talking about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, also, if you'd like to try virtual organizing, but you're not sure that it'll work with your device and internet connection, oh, mm -hmm. drop us a note at info at clutterfairhouston.com and we'll set up a test meeting at a time that's convenient for both you and Gail and you can try it out. We'll set up like a, a, ten, a 10 minute meeting just, as a, just to test it and make sure that it's feasible and then you can schedule a session if it works for you. Test the text and, and figure out how to turn the system on and make sure that the video comes up and your signal's good enough and all that kind of stuff. Um, yes. Ro Rosemary uh, asked, have you had a meeting on how to organize home papers in files? Would you have one? And that's a <laughs> topic that we, we try to return to in the early spring every year. So I think we will feature some paper topics in the and coming we, weeks. We have recorded it many times. We have talked about paper a, long t a lot over the years. Everybody has pain around paper. There is no person who's like, I'm on it. I got the paper. I'm all good. Like even organizers are sort of like, yeah, it's organized, but it's paper. Like there's no thing, hardly anybody is extra super excited about managing paper. And so you are not alone and we talk about it a lot and we I'm sure you can go find videos already that are there and there will be other videos coming in the future too. One for we, sure. We did one in April 2016 called Bigger Buckets Streamline yes. Paper Organizing. And um I think that one is that was pretty probably popular. Still very applicable. And so yeah. um Rosemary, you might want to look Look on YouTube for that one. Bigger Buckets is the name of it. You probably won't find too many other things with that title. Um, and then there are a few others. If you search the YouTube channel on paper, you'll you can find several that we've we've done in the past. Yeah. <clears throat> but we'll we we try to circle back to that topic from time to time, and so we'll do some more soon. Denise had uh, a nice idea that she shared. She said, "My four-year-old grandson loves cooking with his mom." So my Christmas Aww. present to him is cookie cutters and so, and so on, plus all the ingredients and cake decorations he needs. Oh, that that's way, so cute. The gift, the gift lasts all year. Right? Well, and, you know, I remember that my nephew used to do that when he was a little kid, too. They, he would get in there with his dad when it was time to make the Christmas treats, 
and they still do those treats. He's just, um, you know, much taller now. <laughs> but I remember he did the same thing when he was a little kid. It must be fascinating as a little kid to get in the kitchen. What a great idea. That was, that's really, that's a good one. And get him a little a apron and a little chef hat. <laughs> right. We did a lot <laughs> of that too. And then one of my younger sisters um, used to make uh, the Easter candy with 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 dad every year they had they had four or five different things they routinely did to to make so we had homemade easter candy in our easter baskets in addition and, you to you know and that's, a, that's something stuff. that they'll remember when they're grown up spending time with their parent that's a brilliant idea denise really that's very brilliant good for you okay uh i lost my place let's see i want to make sure i got everybody's questions i think so so far um so the next thing we wanted to talk about um we had a question do you have any ideas for things people can do in the downtime between christmas and new year to get 2020 off to a great start with organizing this is a good one this you know everybody Everybody that works for a living, it gets a little quieter in that week between Christmas and New Year's. It's a little calmer. Uh, everybody's distracted. Everybody's at home. And so the requirements on your time and attention after the great Christmas or Hanukkah gift giving blowout is <laughs> gone by. Um, it is a perfect time to focus on projects and to get ready for the new year and one of them that i thought of was to filter your christmas decor now so some people take christmas down like on christmas day like they start putting it away right away and some people hang on to it until after the new year so it, it whether you're taking it down right away or you're not taking it down for a little while there there will be decorations that a didn't go up so they're up in your junk room, son's room, <laughs> back room somewhere, waiting for Christmas to come down and things to be put away. It's a perfect time to go through that stuff and go, yeah, these decorations didn't make it up this year. And it's because I don't like them. I have replaced them with something better. They are, they are old and not worth it anymore. Whatever the reason, um, the decorations are out. You have a few moments of breathing space. And you can go and look at those decorations and find out, I don't want to repack all this stuff and put it all back away if, if I'm just saving it for no good reason. And so go in there and filter it out, see what's happening and make some donations now for people so that they can take their, if you're going to take it to your kid's school or you're going to go give it to a, a church or you're going to go give it to a local charity that you're involved in. Um, you can take those things and give them now so that when they put their Christmas decorations away, your donation goes away with their packing so that it's there ready to go when they get it out next year. So it's the perfect time for you to trade ownership and somebody else can put it away with their, um, with their decorations and be ready for the next year. So <clears throat> it's a perfect time for that. And truly as your kids get older and the, you know, hoopla gets, you know, it matures and changes over time. There are things that you put up a long time ago that maybe aren't important anymore. And so, yes, there's always family heirlooms. And yes, there's all the things that you kept that are the kids artwork that you're always going to hang on the tree. But those things are probably already out right now. Anyway, they're not the things that you left in the back as not worth being um, put up this year. And so, Go spend some time with those things and make them um, make some hard decisions about them. Don't make yourself put away something that you're really never going to put up again. Another thing was uh, go find the receipts for the Christmas gifts that you gave to find the ones that you need to return because here's the perfect moment when you're going to start thinking about, okay, these five gifts, this didn't fit. This isn't the right color. This yada, yada, reject. And now's the time to go find those receipts for the things that you need to return. Because, of course, you're not going to return all of them. You have a gazillion receipts, and you got to go find the three that apply to the things that are going to go back. So now's the time to go find them while you still have a thought in your head about where they might be <laughs> because you bought them in the last month. 
Um, the other thing is that you can sort of turn your focus to 2020 and go into your file cabinets and wherever you're storing paper records and pull out the paper for 2019. Um, empty those files or um, pull those files out, whatever you're going to do about that. You want to collect the files that are necessary, the paperwork that's necessary for your tax return, so what you're going to need to use on your tax return. And then you also want to um, separate paper that you don't need to for your tax return. It's not important for you to keep because you own something, you know, whatever. If it's paperwork that's now it's in the year and you don't need it anymore, you're not going to use it for anything anymore. And you're not going to use it to prove income or deductions on your tax return. Then it's shred time and you can have a shred party. This is the perfect time. You're sitting there watching the Hallmark Channel anyway. You also sit there with the shredder and shred or bag up a couple of bags of shredding and run down the Office Depot and stand at their copy center and let them shred it there. So um, it's a perfect time to pull all the 19 stuff out that's gonna go out and then come home and make some 2020 setup. Here's the new 2020 files or here's the new empty files where the 2020 stuff is gonna go or here's a, a file box or a container that you're gonna put 2020 paperwork in. So to create your new space for the new records to go in. And that way you can sort of have the, the mental pause of here's the old year going out and here's the new year coming in. And the, what's gonna happen in January is you're gonna start getting all those, here's all the 1099s and here's the W-2 and everybody that has to send you a tax document is gonna be sending it in the first 31 days or you know maybe two months if things don't go in a timely manner you'll end up getting tax documents that you need to have. And so those documents need to have a place to go. And having that tax collection for 2019 already there means that you can take those envelopes and go, oh, another tax document and go stick it straight in the tax file. So that three months from now or four months from now when it's April and you're trying to do your taxes, you don't have to then go find it because you've already put it all in there. So creating that 2019 file and the 2020 um, receptacle will save you some trouble in April. And that is the, my suggestions for the gap between the holidays. And of course, you don't have to do them all in one sitting. And you can do, you know, one today and one two days later and one two days after that, and, and you'll be all ready to go. Well, and we are also cooking up a video that we hope to have ready before the end of the year with a few other thoughts on uh, how to approach a new year. New That's routines all, and new th habits. There you go. A um, couple more questions. Okay. Um, what recommendations do you have for items that don't fit a category? This is from your client who is organizing her garage. Um, ah. Hammer is, con is for construction stuff, but rolls of metal wire for securing things don't really have a category. So I think um, they probably do have a category, and the category is kind of you know, like tools and supplies that Materi you need yeah. in the garage, right? It's like tools and materials. So if you think of it as part of the tool wall, um, and, and if there's more than one kind of wire or things to secure, then I would, you know, bundle all those together. But everybody's garage has hardware and supplies that allow them to do things in the garage and in the yard and that kind of stuff. And so um, you you just want a parking space to put those generally. And and that's the kind of stuff that ends up on a pegboard, right? Like if you have a pegboard or peg wall or nails on a two by four, you can hang some stuff up so that it's in reach. It's not on a table cluttering up a table, but you can still go and hang up a bunch like the wires you're talking about. You can go hang all that stuff up on a peg um, along the wall so that you can see what's there and go grab what you need to have. Um, I should probably look at the collection that you're talking about so I can see how much is there. But um, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's going to depend on, I mean, you you can sort of sort by context, thinking in terms of when I'm working on this, this is going to, I'm going to need this for these kinds of projects and mm -hmm. look for that that commonality yeah. repair, you know, all the repair projects mm -hmm. 
you know, supplies go in this spot. Um, if it's a refinishing project, all those things go in this area. Um, yeah, and, and also, you know, think of a hardware store, right? Like maybe you just want to use the categories in a hardware store. Like this is all about painting and this is all about plumbing and this is all about electrical and this is all about, you know, yard. Like you can pick some bigger categories. So um, if some people are super handy and they do all kinds of things and they're, they like being out in the garage and they're doing all kinds of repair and maintenance and work themselves. And sometimes people hire all that stuff out. And so your categories may be fuller or less full depending, but if you imagine a hardware store and the general categories in a hardware store, you can use the categories that apply to you. Yard is one of them. And there may be, you know, for somebody that has animals on a farm, maybe one of them is, you know, <laughs> about the animals things that are related to the animals, just like you have dog food, you might have a bunch of stuff related to the horses or something. And so you just need to have the categories be big enough to, to support the things that you actually do in your home slash garage slash shed. Right. Okay. We are really out of time now. Uh, okay. <laughs> so a quick reminder that our next meeting will be on Tuesday, January seven at noon central time live in zoom and streaming on facebook yay if you're watching this on youtube we'd love for you to join us live to receive notifications about upcoming events we invite you to join the meetup group gail signs <laughs> <laughs> the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup you can also follow us on facebook by going to cfhou.com slash facebook or subscribe to our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, topic suggestions in the YouTube comments, and you can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. I'm being Vanna White right now. It's so funny. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We can't wait to see you in the new year. We hope that you have a great time and uh, come back ready and raring to go for getting organized. We'll be back on January 7th. Is that correct? Yes. We'll be back on January 7th at noon to do this again. Thanks. Bye. Bye.